Hello and welcome back to another MySQL Essentials Bite Size course tutorial. Here we're going to be learning about database tables. So we're going to be covering SQL to create tables and then utilizing PHP My Admin, the graphical user interface, to then additionally create tables and manage and administrate tables. And then we're going to introduce data types. Uh, so this is just a short introduction in this tutorial about data types. In the next tutorial, I go through data types in more detail. And in addition to that, we'll also introduce you to the primary keys. So far, we've developed a database. A database contains tables. So a database is essentially just a container for tables. So to build tables inside of a database, using SQL is fairly straightforward. We need to use the SQL command, create table, and then we name the table. And then we open and close parentheses. Inside, we have the columns that we want to build. So here's an example of three columns. Notice that we have the column name, and then we need to define the data type. And that ends with a semicolon, except on the last statement. And also note, as per normal, we have the semicolon, which finishes the whole statement. In PHP My Admin, it's fairly straightforward to build a table. Once you've developed a new database, you will be presented with this screen, whereby you can then create a table. So if we get this table name, user. So notice that I'm using lowercase, and you need to try and to avoid utilizing Developing with PHP MyAdmin is fairly straightforward. You simply just need to select the database you want to work on. If there are no tables, by default, there are no tables in the database, then simply create a new table. And then secondly, you just need to define how many columns you want to make. So you can change this afterwards, so you're not limited to four if you choose four. So I'm just gonna build a table with two columns. So the columns obviously represent the data that I want to store. So here I want to store in the user, the first name. So notice that I'm using an underscore, not a space, and I'm not using capital letters. So generally it's recommended to use lowercase and underscores for space. So try and also avoid using numbers and special characters. So here you're just trying to make a a name that describes the data that's going to be stored in that column. So here I'm going to store first name and age. So as you might imagine, these are two different data types because here I want to store a string and here I want to store a numerical number. When storing numbers in a database, we simply just need to think ahead what data is going to be entered into this field. So by knowing what data we need to store, we can then choose the appropriate data type. So for example, if I needed small numbers, I would use a tiny int. But if I needed to store really large numbers, I might use an integer or, or larger. So for our example table, we might utilize a tiny int for a age, so I can select tiny int. So now I know that that's probably a suitable data type to store numbers. People tend to live up until the age of 120. So first name is slightly different because this is a string. So I can't use numeric uh, data types for this. So for text, I have another range of different data types I can select and choose and then define my field. So here, for example, I just need to work out how much text I'm going to store, how many characters I need to store within the field. So if I know it's gonna be a small piece of text, then I might choose a data type that holds a small piece of text. And of course, if I need larger pieces of text, then I'm gonna obviously choose a larger character length. So here, for example, maybe text for storing text I want to store in a blog, for example. So let's go back to the database. Uh, here we're going to just need to think about first name. 
So although, for example, a var jar might store 65,000 characters, I can also limit um, that by utilizing a value here. So for example, let's just limit this to 10 characters. And here, I'm not gonna place a limit, so therefore it's gonna just utilize the default of the tiny int. So let's just save this. So now we've saved our table, we can now go to browse. So with PHP my admin, um, we're able to actually edit the, the table in this view. Now we can only edit the table if there is some data in the table and we've chosen a primary key. So with PHP my admin, we can insert data into the table. So for example, first name and then age and press go. So that's going to insert data into my table. So now when I select browse, you can see I've got some information. If I double click, you'll see that I can't edit the data. So what I need to do is apply a primary key. So if I go back to structure, what I can do here is add one column after or at the beginning of a table. So I can choose where I want to add a new column. So in PHP, HP, my admin, it's very simple to add new columns. So let's add a new column at the beginning of the table and press go. So here I'm gonna include ID. This is gonna be a unique field that's gonna uniquely identify individual items in the table. So here it's gonna be an integer and I'm gonna select the values of 10. So here I press save and then I go back to browse and I can see now I've got a, an ID. So ID zero is gonna be um, referencing the first name name and age 12. So let's just go back to the structure. Now what I can do is I can define a primary key. So if I select ID and then select primary, the ID now becomes a primary key. So the premise or the idea of a primary key is that it's a unique field within our database. So there can only be, for example, one value in ID of zero. So if I try to insert another value of zero, we'll receive an error because it's not unique. So now we have a primary key. You'll notice that when I browse, I can now double click and change the data. Let's have a look at the structure again of our table. So if you remember the first name, we limited to 10 characters. So now let's try and insert a first name that's more than 10 characters. So we have an integer of one, sorry, an ID of one. First name, we're gonna try adding 10 characters. So one, so that's 11 characters. And then we have an age of 12. Press go. And notice that we now have an error because we can't have more than 10 characters. So let's just go back to browse. Notice that something did get insert inserted, but it's truncated. So it's removed the last values. So let's just do that again with numbers. So ID two, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, and then 10. So if I press go again, you can see that Again, it's been truncated. So if I go to browse, you can see that the zero has now been removed. So it's important to understand what data type you're using and also define the right character length for your uh, data so that the data is inserted correctly. Of course, we can change this by clicking change and then we can redefine the length and values. So let's place, replace that with 50 and press save. So you can see that PHP my admin is fairly simple to utilize. We created a new table. We've added new structures to the table. We've added data to the table. We've added a primary key so that when we can then go to browse and then just 
enables us then to edit the data directly from this screen. And we've seen how we can change data types in structure here. We can change data types. If we select everything and click on change, we can view the whole database as one rather than one column at a time. So now we have a simple table in phpMyAdmin. There are some other tools that we can utilize potentially. So obviously we have delete here, for example, and edit. So we can delete individual rows or fields, um, but we also have export. So this can be rather useful when we want to export data or have a look at the SQL for a table, for example. So if I select export and then choose the format SQL and then press go, that's going to make a copy of the database in SQL language. So now when I open this file, we can open it with Notepad, for example. You can see that inside of here is the SQL to create that table right here. Underneath is another SQL statement to insert data, the data that we actually had in the database. So this is another way of backing up the data in your database and the whole database. So let's try and put this data back into the database. So here I'm going to delete the table users, drop that. And now I'm going to import the SQL So I select the file and then just press go. Using the default settings, we know it's SQL. And there we go. So now we have our table, it's returned back in our database. So now I'm gonna go through the similar process, but utilizing SQL. So here we're gonna go into the console. So I open up the XAMPP control panel and open up the shell. And if you remember, we need to type in MySQL and then the switch H in localhost, and then switch U, and then the user is root. So now we're inside of the database. So from here, I can now show databases. There we go, so that's all the databases that I have. So now I want to select a database I want to use. So here I use use, and then the database I want to use is going to be test. There we go. So now I'm inside or test has been activated. So any other commands I use from now will be applied to the table, sorry, the database um, test. So inside of here, we're going to show tables. So we have one table. That was the table that we made in phpMyAdmin. So let's build a new table. So we're going to need the keyword create and then table. And then we just name the table. So here we're going to make a new table called person. And we open the parentheses, parentheses, sorry. And now we can move to a new line. So working in this way, I press enter to enter a new line. So the command is just continuing, but it's a lot easier to work on separate lines rather than one large line. So now I can define the column. So here I want to have ID, and then that's gonna be an integer. And next up is gonna be the name, and I'm gonna choose varchar for that, and then define a character length of 50. Okay, so then I'll have age, and then include another integer, and then define that to be 100. Give that a range. Okay, and now I finished creating all of my fields. So this isn't gonna work unless you define a primary key. So if I press the include a comma, and try and run this, it will receive an error. So here's the example again, but this time, I create table person, but this time I include the attribute or the constraint primary key. 
So now I have name, which is going to be a bar char 30, and age which is going to be an integer of 100. So notice that I don't include the colon at the end, and I close the parentheses, parentheses sorry, and then use the semicolon. So if I run this, we then have a new table. So I can check that by sh show tables. And there we go. So we have a new table. So how do you view what's inside of a table? So here we have the keyword describe. So you use describe and then you enter or define the table that you want to look in. And you can see here we have now an output of the table, the fields, the type and so on. So using PHP my admin, we don't have to use the console because there's a console built in. Here we have the SQL tab. And from here, we can practice SQL. So take, for example, we're inside of the table user. So if we do a describe again, and then the table user. So let's just see if this works. There we go. We now have a view of the table as if we were going to use the console. So learning SQL, this can be a good way of getting started because here in this editor, it does give us some visual highlighting when we go wrong, when we type in the wrong command. So it can definitely be useful to start working from here. Now we also have these options down here where we can utilize predefined select, insert, update and delete SQL formats. And then we can utilize this format to learn how to complete SQL or write SQL statements so that we can enter data, insert or update or delete data from our database. So we also have the option down here of simulating the query. So if we're not too sure if we want to, if the query is going to work or what the query is going to produce, we can simulate the, the query. So hopefully now you feel a little bit more comfortable creating tables in MySQL and PHP MyAdmin. So here we've looked primarily at PHP My Admin using the graphical user interface just to really ease you into the subject and using SQL. We did go over some SQL, but of course there's there's more that we could have shown you. For example, how to add new columns to an existing table or so on. We'll have a look at that in a future tutorial. So for now, have a little practice at building tables and become familiar with viewing the data in the tables with SQL and PHP My Admin. And try and have a look at PHP, PHP My Admin to export data and see if you can then import the data back in. It's a really handy tool to have and skill to be able to extract the database um, because you can obviously make backups really easily in case you make a mistake. So in the next tutorial, we're going to be having a little bit more uh, defined view or having a look a little bit more detail into data types because there are plenty more of data types that are important for us to develop a database.